Uh, we're recording. Oh, wait. That was for patrons. Let's do the real recording. Now for real. For real this time. Frillsies. Yep. This is for realsies. Back it up and tuck it in. It is time for the... Oh, and it's going to sound a little different. It's, okay. I, t- I warned you earlier, so... Yeah, just oh, so you're you not said freaking out. next week. Just so, so you're we're not freaking trying, out. We're doing this now. Well, some of it. It's because PM okay. is affected oh slightly. Oh, my gosh, I'm nervous. All right, don't be. Here we go. Okay. In All three, right, two, one. This is the morning stream, but it's not in the morning. It's at night. TMS PM. everybody and welcome to TMS PM. This is the PM edition of the show where we do the show on a PM edition of the show on Fridays. It's 3.30 Mountain Time. It's, uh, what day is it? Friday, October Friday. 18th. Yeah, that's Brian's voice. Hi, Brian. Right. Hi, Scott. Happy Friday the 18th to you. Thanks, man. Boy, that was a scary movie series, Friday the 18th. Oh, Friday Ooh. the 18th. Nobody died. Ooh. No, it was like, it was about a camp where uh, this guy in a hockey mask uh, taught the kids how to play hockey, and it was really scary. Yeah, it was super scary. Take our word for it. Uh, there was a scene where Kevin Bacon got stabbed from under the bed, but on the 18th, it didn't hurt at all. He was fine. Right, it was uh, it was stabbed with a uh, a salami. Wait, was that him or was that Johnny Depp? No, it was Kevin, no, it was Kevin Bacon. Johnny Depp was Nightmare on Elm Street. That's right. I mean, I'm sorry, Nightmare on Main Street, which right. was the, the, the Friday the 18th version of 19, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. Right. Sleep disturbance on Main Street. That's what they call it. <laughs> That's right. Exactly. Yes. Anyway, we're happy to be here. We're going to do a PM edition of the show, and we're really uh, glad to be doing it because you guys are rad, and we like hanging out with you guys. Uh, I got a fun little uh, baby thing to tell you about. Oh, I like baby stories. All right. Sure. So he's over here today. Oh. Little guy. He's uh, growing up, getting all big. And um, playing with him, holding him. He had food, and he's chilling out. And I'm teasing him because you can play. Anytime you play the opener of, um, oh, what the frick is it called? The the uh, 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 Hercules, the movie Hercules from Disney. Mm-hmm. He gets mesmerized by it. It's there's something in uh, Charlton Heston's voice during that narration that just gets the boy. And oh so, really? Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to. Uh, show you the part that freaks him out. Did I have to watch, have him watch uh, Planet of the Apes and see if he gets that same? <laughs> oh, that's a great <laughs> idea. That's a great idea. Yeah. All right, Hercules. You dirty apes! You blew it up. So here it is. This is the part that gets him every time. I'm probably gonna get in trouble for this, but I don't care. Here we go. Okay. Listen to this. Okay. Long ago, in the faraway land of ancient Greece. Okay. There's this scene yeah. at the beginning. And it's Charlton uh-huh. Heston, one of the last things he did before he kicked it. And uh, when that comes on, it doesn't matter how upset Van might be, how uh, sad he might be, how <laughs> any of that stuff he might be feeling. He suddenly goes into full trance mode. Wow. And wants to know where it comes from. He'll sit up and go, so he'll be like, me, I'm tired, me. And then that'll come on. He'll go like this. <laughs> and then he'll just kind of do like this. <laughs> like look around now i've uh his mom when it was on netflix she would play that movie for him a lot i think it's like it clicked and like stuck and so anytime he hears the beginning of hercules that's the end of that like he is just awesome. out of it. it doesn't matter how upset he is it could be upset bum rash upset tummy uh bonked his head <laughs> it doesn't matter he'll suddenly oh, just go oh that's great <laughs> moses is commanding you to to <laughs> chill out van <laughs> I love doing it to him. It's really funny. There's I was a, trying to remember if there was a uh, did did Charlton Heston ever play uh, God in a like religious movie? I can't think of any. No, he was Ben Hur. Uh, Let's see, Moses Ben Hur. What else? What other? Ever, like was he? He wasn't uh, Clash of the Titans. He like didn't do any sort of Greek gods thing, right? No, Clash of the, the newer Clash of the Titans was Liam Neeson as uh, Zeus, right? And the original one was Houston, not Heston. Oh, John Houston, right? The the filmmaker yeah. John Houston, right? Yeah, right. Um. Yeah, I don't. Th- you know what I was thinking? Maybe there was a, like a parody thing, like when they had Patrick Stewart be the Men in Tights King, mm-hmm. whereas uh, Sean Connery was that for Robin Hood Men and or Robin Hood. What was it? What was the Kevin Costner one called? Robin Hood something. Prince Robin of Thieves. Hood, Prince of Thieves. Mm-hmm. Right. And so I thought maybe they they would stunt cast Charlton Heston as God or as something yeah. like that. Right. I'm a little surprised right. they never did it. Men in Tights. No, that wasn't him though. That was Patrick Stewart. Right. Yeah, I don't know. But there's a lot of dead people uh, in Hercules. I know I go to that a lot. He did. But, but. He apparently played uh, in 1990. He played uh, God in 
Almost an Angel, which is the one where uh, Paul Hogan, Crocodile Dundee, is like, isn't he a bad guy who's hiding out in a... And I mean, I'm probably thinking of Sister Act. <laughs> but it was like he was hiding out in a convent or a... <laughs> Wait, was he in Sister Act? He wasn't in Sister Act, was he? No, 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 no. Oh. But I'm, I'm sure I'm thinking, like, uh, it was Paul Hogan. It was Crocodile Dundee. Yeah. Um, Australia's famous dude... Yes, and and uh, what's his face played uh, God. It was uh, Charlton Heston played God, but uh, he played an ape in the uh, the remake the of Planet of the Apes, right? The Tim Burton one. Yeah, yeah. that was weird. I didn't like that. He also narrates uh, Armageddon, which came out a year after Hercules. You'll have to see if uh, see what uh, Van thinks of Armageddon. <laughs> I wonder if they have that in the soundtrack. I would totally do that because this because <laughs> this would prove it, right? Like, uh, yeah, totally, right, exactly. But something about his voice, yeah. Armageddon and albums. Let's just real quick and check. Okay, here we go. Armageddon, the album, the movie. Uh, the, we, do we have a? Th okay, here's the beginning. Oh, this is just. In the beginning, <laughs> <laughs> you pull that gun from my dead hands, Bill Clinton. There were comets, oh, and shit. then there was the Earth. That's uh, okay. So that's uh, Aerosmith. I was playing. That doesn't count. Oh yeah, I can't think of a narrator in uh, Armageddon, honestly. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I don't remember but he's well. listed as the narrator. So uh, uh, almost an angel, 1990. Uh -huh. uh, Terry Dean, played by Paul Hogan, is a professional burglar specialized in sabotaging electronic surveillance system systems. He, uh, let's see. Uh, oh, he dies. He meets Charlton Heston. Okay. Uh, and then basically gets a second chance to save his soul by doing God's work as an angel in training. Wow. So I wasn't far off with the whole sister act reference. No, I'm going to give you points. I think you Thanks. did. I think you did well. Thank you. I just got to find some of that stuff or get an interview on YouTube or something and see if the kid reacts to it. But anyway, that's yeah. not even the point. The point was I would play that. <laughs> <laughs> and he would do that thing but today the big deal is that he's got two little teeth coming in okay oh, uh -huh. so he's got the one over here and then another one just bu just burst through the old skin uh skin cave <laughs> i don't know what you call it what are the gums it just came the through gums, the gums yeah. and Oof. uh <laughs> the old skin cave that the old the, skin cave yes. sound right anyway so these these two things have popped out and i thought well that'd be funny to, to see if i can feel that so i washed my hands and i just got in there with my thumb and went all right let's see what you got boy and he went and it freaking hurt oh. so i said charlie bit me and then uh, i was an internet sensation <laughs> anyway that's oh here you go did you were you playing that uh, the youtube video at the beginning of armageddon uh no here, it's this one right here so all right put, i found put it in the thing all right let's see what we got putting it in the thing okay this does not have catalina jumping up and down damn it all right well i'll hit play anyway uh, let's see Okay, touch some pictures presents. All right, about 18 seconds you get Charlton Helston. All right, I'll go 16 in. This is the Earth at a time when the dinosaurs roamed a lush and fertile planet. I don't remember that. I don't either. I don't remember any narration in our beginning. I definitely don't and, remember Charlton Heston narration. There's no and way. And this is Bruce Willis. <laughs> He's come to planet Earth. We'll have a few laughs. His children have funny names. There are no guns in this movie. <laughs> I can't get behind it. Uh, that would be like the outtakes in the studio. Hold on, hold on a minute. You're telling me there are no guns in this film? Why am I don't doing this? Don't they shoot the meteor? Get my... Why don't they just shoot the meteor? That damn agent on the phone. You damn dirty agent. You damn dirt, get your hands off me, you damn dirty agent. <laughs> uh, I love it. Yeah, they did have a gun in space. Brian was kidding because he would be mad. See, he was the head of, an, of the NRA for a while there. That's the whole point. Right. A lot of That's people right. may not exactly. know that. Yes, it's a lot of layers to this joke. It was a lot a, of it, layers. It was a big deal in the 90s because he was always yelling at Clinton because yeah. Clinton wanted to, uh, well, in fact, they got the assault ban th through at the time, and, and uh, Heston was all pissed about it, was always getting up in front of people saying that Clinton would have to take his gun from his cold, dead hands and stuff like that. Right. It's pretty right. intense. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think they've had anybody quite that notable at the head of the NRA since then. I think it's no. all been uh -huh. just gun nuts. Definitely then. not, no. 
Uh, someone's now gonna ride in. Now we just have in. to settle for Clint Eastwood yelling at a chair. That's, yeah, that's that's our <laughs> that's Al- our new thing. <laughs> Although he's gone strangely quiet lately. He has, yes, hmm. which worries me. Yeah. I mean, it's either because he's a thousand years old, or maybe he thinks a little better of of things now, or a little worse. I don't know. Or maybe I he, think that he's because he was never a complete wackadoo. He was always kind of. Right. I'm well, the only conservative voice left in Hollywood kind of thing going on. But I'm not sure he's cool with what's going on. I wouldn't be if I were him. Uh, No. How old is Clint Eastwood now? 122. 75? Oh. 78? That was 113. Is he? Oh, he's probably crossed into 80, hasn't he? 89. <laughs> yeah. Whoa. I way undershot that one. Whoa. He's, he's bordering on 90. Wow. Okay. Holy crap. Yeah. Uh, Well done. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe take a break. Didn't he just put out a movie this year? That can't be right. Hold on. Clint uh, Eastwood. IMDb. All right. He is most recently known for doing the following thing. As I click on the link. Oh, the mule. Yeah, oh, last yeah. year he was in the mule. Yeah, that means he was doing that, that at 88, 89. Mm-hmm. American Sniper before that. Although he was just a, that was an actor job. Hold on. Director. Yeah, and he's got another the Richard Jewell movie coming up. It's in post production. Oh, I saw the the trailer for that. Yeah, look at this. They should get the dude from uh, Mindhunter, mm-hmm. Ed Kemper guy, to play Richard Jewell. I'm in. I bet you were wondering why I was carrying a bomb in a backpack. <laughs> I'm really just a policeman. I swear, none of this is actually happening. <laughs> that would be great. Uh, yeah, oh, 89 awesome. years old, and man, if I'm working that hard at that age. More power to yeah, him. Then, then we're doing something right. Exactly. Yeah, I don't think he's that wacky. I think he's just he's got a, he's got an old conservative in him, and they're not the same as what we got today. They're different. Mm-hmm. There's there's a difference, yeah. and I get why yep. he would be annoyed with the left, but who boy, mm-hmm. this ain't this your Republican true. Party today. This is true. Yes. Uh, all right, let's move on. Anywho, anywho, let's let's get to this. Right, uh, hold on. I got a new setup here. I'm trying to make this work. Just a second, everybody. Don't go anywhere. Here it is. I found it. All right, time for a little app slappy, where we talk about apps that we've been messing with that we like, we may want to share with each other and the listeners. Brian and I are iOS guys, but a lot of times what we like ends up being on multiple platforms. So worry your heads. This time. Not this time, probably, because <laughs> Brian's probably doing an Apple Arcade. I am uh, doing selection. an Apple Arcade game, yes. I I'm am, all in, man. Yeah. I, I got my uh it must have been one month since Apple Arcade started because our free month is over. Mm-hmm. And now I got my first notice of all right, four ninety nine has been charged to your account mm-hmm. from Apple Arcade. Oh yeah. Yeah, mine too. My, my free month's I'm over. Getting, I'm getting joy. This is sparking joy. So it's a lot of joy for very little money. That's right. Um, okay, yeah. I will start yeah. today with. Uh, <laughs> for, for a second, I thought my tr- my thing was going off. <laughs> you accidentally bumped your soundboard. Yeah. <laughs> like, how is that happening? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, all right. So my game is right here. Grindstone. I hope I'm not stealing yours. I'd feel no, bad. Okay. No. I put mine in the I put mine in TMS. You'll you're in the this the show notes so you can see what it does. Oh, oh okay. I appreciate that. I didn't even think to look yeah, there. Because then right. you can pull up a graphic of it as I talk about oh, it. Oh, a graphic. So a gra- uh, how the, the graphic? <laughs> I really like Grindstone. Um, and I'll tell you what it is. Now, back in the day, okay. this is like 08, 09, 2010. Games on phones were not full of microtransactions and were just fun on their own. You just got them and you played them and you maybe paid a buck for them and then you played the game and it was great. And in that time, there's a lot of great puzzle games, right? Like, here's Bejeweled and here's a thousand Bejeweled ripoffs, but they're all kind of Mm -hmm. okay because they're not charging you dumb things yet. Then Candy Crush came and ruined it all. I almost got this. I'm so glad you're doing this one. Yeah. So, uh, as a result, uh, one of the things I like about Apple Arcade is you get a lot of these uh, kinds of experiences without all of that trash in it right so we're kind of back to the basics there's nothing wrong with a good drag and drop matching sort of puzzle game there's nothing wrong with that wrong with that no No. nothing wrong with that at all if you know you can get one without all the the hooey 
Yeah, all and, the microtransactions and garbage. Yeah, which is something nobody wants, nobody asked for, mm-hmm. and we would really prefer not to have. So, mm-hmm. I'm happy to report that Grindstone is one of those, and I've been trying to get this screen up for people. There we go. Yeah, so I mean, the fact that it's on Apple Arcade kind of says it's, you're not going to get any of that garbage. Yeah, that stuff just doesn't exist in this format, which is cool. Mm-hmm. It's the reason I like it, uh, or mm-hmm. one of the reasons. It's the, There are two main facets to, to why I think Apple Arcade is working for me so well. Number one... The price is extremely low and the quality has been really high. So that combo has yep. been great. And this other idea that these games are just pure game experiences and aren't full of weird microtransaction things. None of them are. That's like part of the rule is you don't have that in your game. Exactly. You cannot have it. So Not allowed. So this one comes across the bow. It was actually one of the early ones, but it did come out, I think, a day or two after the, the first launch. And it was called Grindstone. And it had this wacky art style. And kind of silly graphics, kind of over-the-top, violent, silly-looking graphical game. And the game, as far as I could tell, was a lot like those old dungeon crawlers that were like Bejeweled, except instead of trying to match three, you would start with one and then create as long a trail as you could of the matching ones. And then when you let go, it would, you know, everything else Uh would be affected and move or whatever. Yeah. That's one of these. Uh, And it's a really good one of these. And it's funny, uh, like the interstitial stuff is actually pretty funny. You're like this great big beefy looking barbarian guy, and your job is to kill all these creatures and monsters and do as much of it as you can before you exit the place, and then the next one's going to be harder and so on. And the you know difficulty gets harder. You get cooler upgrades. Uh, the some of the creatures are pissed, so if you don't clear them and they're near you, they're going to hurt you. So that's how you die. Um, you get gems after you clear a whole bunch of these dudes and the gems can be spent in the store back at home to pay for upgrades for the next time you go out. And it is delightfully violent. When you're done killing everybody, they look like little piles of sushi. Like you just <laughs> chop them all to pieces and there's like right. blood and meat laying there. Um, but it's comically violent. Oh, very I mean, comically. It's like, oh, yeah. very much. Yeah, it's cartoon violence, which is kind of funny. Totally. Um, on the chat room, says, Zero Cool asks if there's a family option. Yes, the across the service, that's the whole point. Five people can play it whenever they want. Uh, each person gets their own cloud saves. So if you're playing this on your phone, you like switch to your tablet or your TV or whatever, it, your save follows you with you. Yeah. Um, oh, is this the game by the Puzzle, Puzzle Agent people? Agent. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe. It is now, similar graphics. Yeah, now that you say that, it's a very similar style. Uh, but it's it just feels like, in some ways, a throwback to what those games were and how great they were just, you know, to sink some time into. But also, it feels new and, and modern um, mm-hmm. and stripped of all the free-to-play garbage. So All of that nonsense. Cannot yeah. say enough about yeah. it. It's probably my top... It's in my top three arcade games right now um, on the service. Oh. And... It's really great. I've been playing others, too. Um, what's funny is, uh, for comparison's sake, for Boop and some other stuff, I've been playing this game, or game, sorry, games that are on this service and then trying, like, the Steam version of the same game. Oh, sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, just to see what the difference is. Yeah, because it makes sense to, to try to see, all right, you know, iOS, the touch interface is really good for this or the way they've incorporated the the joystick uh, ability is, is good in this. Mm-hmm. I, I get it. it makes yeah, sense. just a fun way to see how they're doing it. And it's so far mm-hmm. a pretty good parody across uh, across cool. platforms. But anyway, I I've like it a lot. I've to try something on the Apple TV that I've bought on on arcade on oh you should get your, really ex- get your get your controller synced you'll be all set man yeah i'm excited to try that yeah it works really well um i haven't played this one on the tv mainly because it's a it's a vertical oriented one so mm-hmm. i think this is perfect yeah. for the phone you can play it on your ipad but i like it on mm-hmm. the phone because it's like get it out play a couple rounds put it away like they know that that's how people play with their phones and so i like that a lot uh anyway i think it's cool and worth uh, that alone, that game alone was worth the first month's payment. Uh, yeah. So that's, that's how cool. I good. how I feel about this service so far. All right, Brian, what did you bring? Very good. Well, that'll be the next thing that I bought or the next thing that I download. Yeah. Uh, mine is iOS exclusive or Apple Arcade exclusive. And this is by the guys who did Monument Valley. Mm-hmm. You can click that link to pull it up. The, okay. uh, um, the second link down, or I'm sorry, the second, if you swipe, if you scroll up on this website, you get to a video that you can play that uh, oh, okay, cool. talks, that shows what this is. Right. This is a really cool story game. And I want to emphasize the fact that this is a story game. This is not just like a, ah, oh, shoot them up and shoot things and kill and run, race through a thing or whatever. You're, you're getting a story. And I want people to make sure that 
they know what they're getting into because you're going to want to uh, not just tap, 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 tap your way through all of the dialogue and all that stuff because this actually tells a really cool story. The game is called Assemble with Care. Mm -hmm. And uh, aside from sounding like a uh, traveling Wilbury song, it, uh, it tells the story of this woman who is a she's a fixer she basically goes to a new town and she fixes crap for people mm -hmm. and she can fix a game boy she can fix a tape recorder she can fix a camera all these things this is for anybody who um who likes taking crap apart mm -hmm. fixing it and putting it back together themselves like yeah. I love this kind of stuff. Like, you know, this 3D printer thing. Half of the half of the joy of the 3D printers for me is is printing stuff in 3D. Mm -hmm. The other half of it is getting to get my hands in there and twiddle with stuff and and you know and fix stuff. Um, that's what this thing is all about. And right down to the right down to the find a screw, unscrew it. The screw goes into a little cup. Uh, you can take a piece apart. You can see what's missing. You can put another piece in. Oh, that won't stay. Okay, well, I've got glue. Squeeze some glue on there. Put the other piece back on. Now it'll stay together. This is just like the sweetest uh, sweetest little story game with this, with this heartbreaking story behind it. It's really cool. It's called Assemble with Care. And uh, I, I thought, all right, well, I'll get it, and I'll try a couple levels so I can talk about it. I ended up doing seven levels because I just couldn't put it down. It's like, oh, I want to do one more. I'm going to do one more. Mm -hmm. And I ended up doing seven levels just because I couldn't stop playing it. Yeah, I ended up playing this as well um, and love it. It's it's very cool. I mean, it's yeah. it's not so much a game as it is a tinkerer kind of a uh, simulation, which, sure. which is... A, a, it was as compelling as anything else I've done on there, and it's perfect for touchscreen because you're just kind of rotating stuff around, pulling things out. Yeah. It's got a great style to it, almost kind of mm -hmm. painterly. It's hard to explain. Mm -hmm. The color choice yeah. is really interesting. It's a very, very cool little game. And that one, you're right, that one is a 100% exclusive. That's not going anywhere. Right. Which right. I which I learned something about that. So there's three there's three tiers. There's okay. exclusive and nowhere else at all. There's exclusive to mobile but it can also go to consoles and pcs the developers choose this okay okay so they can choose exclusive to mobile meaning it'll only be on ios never on android but they can be on consoles and other you know steam or whatever and then the third tier is it's here but it could be on android it could be anywhere it wants to be and then and the breakdown is that the the more exclusive you are the more the bigger cut at, you get from apple makes total sense how, yeah. how sustainable that is i don't know yet like who knows until we get further down the road. Yeah, I'm curious how that model works. So I mean, basically, they just take everybody's subscription, and if somebody downloads your game, you get a piece of that subscription for every person who downloads your game. I assume that the download of your game is what gets you paid because, yeah. Here's the tricky part, though. Let's say these games are in there for perpetuity and they're in there for three years. Let's say, mm -hmm. in that three years, they added five or six games a month. Is are you now? taking a much Getting tinier a smaller, slice like i don't know yeah. i don't know how that works probably but what they've probably done is simulated that out in some math models or something to show that you'd have that drop off no matter what platform you were on sure so sure. at least here if someone just gives you a download you're still getting paid yeah but it, a year from now somebody starts their game on there there's already going to be 600 games on apple arcade they're they're coming into it with a small cut aren't they no they would come in with a they would come in with a with a normal cut. I think there's some algorithm okay. going on with timing as well. So the newer your gotcha, game, the more okay. you're going to get. I don't know this all this, you know, for sure. There's only bits and pieces sure, that sure. I'm aware of. Speculation or what? yeah, some is speculation for sure. But mm -hmm. um, I don't think they've told anyone how it works. But sure. they they uh, you know in theory, again in theory, the newer games mm -hmm. will get uh, attention. But also you get more attention if you do the tier that is your exclusive tier, or the right. second one. The third one gets maybe less. Uh, play on the front page or any kind of special shout outs or any of that stuff in the in the store so there's a lot I have a lot of questions about all of that and also Apple's yeah. responsibility to make sure that new titles get a lot of attention because part of the problem with the old store uh, which is still there but part of the problem is once there's so many millions and millions and millions of games how do you know what to do like what are you even right. looking for yeah you you yeah. rely on Apple to say oh we found some good ones you might like so that curation is nice but who 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 decides who gets in there and you know right 
Yeah, I mean, you can look at the charts and stuff, but to get charts, you need people to find your game, right? Just like and, and download it like crazy. So you need that uh, that initial bump from Apple saying, "Here's what's new and notable. Enjoy." Yep. So uh, how that will work with arcade, we'll probably, you know, over time we'll see. It's mm-hmm. fascinating to me, though. I'm gonna, I want to watch it and see how they do because so, yeah. so far so good, man. It's real good stuff in there. Mm-hmm. Um, here's a, oh, by the way, I found an um, an audio file of Brian playing that game. You guys ready? Here you go. <laughs> tap 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 dodge. Tap 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 tap. Hold. Yeah, that sounds about right. Totally true. That's mm-hmm. exactly how I play that game. Yeah. I don't know where you got that because it, it like I I just start playing it today, but uh, you figured <laughs> it's like magic. <laughs> you must have bugged my house. It's like magic. All right. Well, there you go. There's that. Now this. Steve. Wrong one. See, I, <laughs> what? I moved this all around. I got to find this again. Here it is. And you can always follow me on Twitter. There it is. We're going to play. Oh, hey, do you want to hear all the guest um, the guest intros at the same time to see whose is the longest? <laughs> I know who's the loudest. Yeah. It's going to be Nicole's is the loudest. But And, I, and I'll bet you I'm going to take votes. I'm going to say that uh, Jury's is the longest. Okay. But, but uh, let's play the game. I like your bet. Here you go. I'm going to play it. Wait, let me turn this other thing off. All right, here we go. Hello. Oh. So Nicole's is the loudest as well. And the longest, yeah. Wow. She yeah. who laughs loudest laughs longest. <laughs> anyway, I was screwing around today trying to I get some. I would have been as well. That was so quick. Yeah. His went really quick. I was surprised. I would have bet on jury. You know what? It's because I think that there's a lot of clips to it, but there's just three, right? Mm-hmm. It's just. Mm-hmm. Uh, Oh, I'm terrible with names. Mm-hmm. No, what's the first one? It's uh, these are their stories. These are their stories. Oh, I'm yeah. terrible with names. Which is a total of five right. seconds. Just three. Right. Whereas yeah. Nicole is a nine-second clip. But it doesn't. You don't think of it that way because there's so much information in juries or Tom's for that matter. I even mm-hmm. played Wendy's new one. Something wrong, Batman? Has anybody seen Wendy? Barnacles in a wad. It's, see, that's only three and a half <laughs> seconds. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so all right now now get the the sausage the long mm, sausage clip oh, okay but don't on. tell me how long it is i want to guess i want to say i'm going to guess that that thing is eight seconds long and you don't you don't want me to play the first one you just want the long no one. i want the new one yeah okay here we go you ready yeah so i'm not gonna tell you the time you're gonna just tell me and don't count seconds you just have to i'm not gonna count like. seconds i'm not gonna count seconds all right here we go mm. Sausage. <laughs> All right, I'm going to say six seconds. Uh, incorrect. Four point six is the correct wow, answer. Wow, really? I think yeah. it feels like it's. <laughs> it feels so long. I know. It feels like it gets longer every time I hear it. Let's see the the normal one. Mm, sausage. I mean, that's like one point three seconds. <laughs> So it's like three and a half times longer than that. Would, would Nicole want to just bury that clip if she had the chance? That's prob- or you mean uh, Veronica? Yes, she would. I mean Veronica, yes. Yeah. Sorry. I was yeah. like, wait, would Nicole want to bury that? Why would she? Nicole wouldn't care, I guess. <laughs> she doesn't care. But yeah, no, Veronica probably is sad that she ever made that sound. I don't know. Yeah. She never listens to the show, so probably has no idea we're doing it. So there you go. I know. You know what serves her right for not listening to the show? That's there what I'm go. saying. She yeah. she just gave up on yeah. everybody's shows. She, uh, she made her bed. She can lie in it. With, <laughs> never mind. With the sausage. Wait, what? <laughs> uh, here's Charge the... up your balls. Oh gosh, everything I have oh, from see. her is dirty yeah. and weird. <laughs> can't help it. All right, uh, TMS uh, hashtag TMS ask TMS PM. I can't read. Uh, these are your Twitter questions since last we spoke, and I'm looking at the latest ones now. Let's see if Peter's first. No, he's not. It's like fourth. Oh, slipping Peter. Yep, slipping Peter. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Everything we say sounds dirty. <laughs> Slipping Peter. Uh, laundry <laughs> sent, but that's she's regular, or he or she. I don't know if laundry sent. Yeah, sense. laundry sent is, yeah. Is that a lady or a man? I don't know. Don't know. Doesn't matter. But they smell lovely. Yes. It says this. What is your dream car? Ooh. Oh. Um, I'm going to say a completely refurbished, like restored, perfect working condition, beautiful brand new interior and engine and everything. Uh, 280Z. Ooh, nice! Wow, a Datsun, interesting. From the day, because that thing yeah. was my favorite, favorite car ever, and they're very expensive, re- restored. Like they actually have a huge following, so I'm not the That's only cool. one. But I would want one of those. What would you uh-huh. get? Uh, I'm mine is going to be somewhat boring because 
old things are pretty to look at. I want something new and hot. I want, <laughs> I want, I want just a tech loaded Tesla that you know that does the summon uh, ability, the uh, the big iPad in the middle. I want self driving, and I'll just like, you know, kind of relax as I make my way to Vegas sometime. I, I want, I just want a Tesla. That's okay. all I want. All right. Okay. Ever since I rode in my dad, my dad's got one, and when we were in Vermont, we got to. Uh, uh, right in that but uh so tina's is a 65 uh corvette mm. a red convertible 65 corvette convertible uh just gorgeous like with the white cutout of the you know the corvette cutout yeah but it's a that giant is, uh, nightmare to main maintain that thing isn't it like tons exactly of work. Yeah. well how how would a Datsun 280z be to maintain when <laughs> there are no Datsun dealerships anywhere that's a good point well it's technically Ma what Ma they became mazda right Dot Datsun became mazda isn't that it uh is that right yeah, nissan or nissan because now the nissan, nissan does the 300z's 370z's yes. or whatever it is right right but, can um, i tell you a really quick tina story by yeah, the way yeah okay so when tina and i are uh sitting sitting around watching tv at night uh i'll probably be on my ipad playing the game she'll be on her ipad doing a crossword we're we're paying about 95 percent attention to the show but you know like doing stuff on our on our ipads as people do these days sure unless it's something that we're just like totally focused on like freaking chernobyl which we just finished oh, Holy cow. So, All right, anyway. so good so good yeah so she uh, i asked her by the way if i could tell the story and she says yeah fine okay so uh <laughs> um she's she's doing a crossword puzzle and she's like uh i need your help nook's partner and i said oh uh is it like six letters she says yeah i said cranny she's like oh yeah thanks i don't play chess <laughs> she thought you meant rook she thought i meant really like, she was thinking rooks and crannies oh. and, <laughs> like, and i like chess uh no nooks and crannies are a whole different <laughs> thing that's like uh it's very funny. I mean, I don't have room to laugh with my freaking cheetah thing back in the right, day. But like, exactly. We all yeah. we all we, screw up. We've so. all had one of these, but that's a good one. I like yeah, that a lot. <laughs> it's like when somebody you asked just me had what, a little brain fart. When someone asked me what cards I had in my hand, and I said, I can't remember what game we were playing. I said, Do you have any clovers? And this was like just a year ago. <laughs> I know sure. it's a club. I know, but I still yeah. said clover like some kind of idiot. <laughs> so I get it. That's a great yep, story. Exactly. We all, we, you know, we all do that. Uh, here's one. Monica Pumpkinface says, uh, what was the weirdest thing a guest has done in your house or the weirdest thing you've seen in someone else's house? Hmm. Uh, What's a weird thing a guest has done at your house? Okay. Probably? I'm not going to say who this was. Dave. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I'm not going to I'm not going to say who this was. Um, I will say it was not Dave. Okay. But uh, so we, uh, this was at my 40th birthday party. We had a bunch of people over. Yeah. And um, as you know, you, you end up at the end of the night with maybe like three or four people kind of sticking around late and playing a game or just chit chatting or something like that. All the, all the other people have gone home and it's like, uh, you know, down to me and Tina and like two or three other people. And uh, this person uh, absent mindedly, starts like you know digging in their ear with their finger while they're talking oh, no. and then just kind of doing a matthew mcconaughey rolling it up into a ball and just kind of dropping it on the floor oh geez you watch this then you saw this go down? i watched this like i watched this whole thing Ugh. they're like they're talking the whole time and it's like absent-mindedly doing it. it's like do i say anything like do you uh do you do that like that's not something you're supposed to do. You go over there, you find it on the carpet, you pin him back, force his mouth open, and make him eat it. That's what you do. <laughs> That's awful. Ugh. Yeah. I don't like exactly. that one at all. All right, tell me, tell me the thing. All right, I may there. have so I may have said this on the show before, but it's still the weirdest thing anyone ever does. So, and I say does because she still sometimes does it. Oh, my God, sister in law, okay. my sister in law Oknon, who I adore, I just think mm -hmm. she's great. She's this hundred percent Korean member of my family by that i mean raised there born there lived there till she was 25 and then came to america so sure. she is as korean as you get and the reason that's uh the reason that matters is because we thought this was a cultural thing turns out it's a her thing uh, so it's just kind of her that does it so i probably didn't even need to bring the korean part up but it's still kind of funny if you keep it in context <laughs> Okay. So she well, comes, do it anyway yeah. she came into the house or she will come into the house she's done this multiple times so it's not just one time as soon as she comes to the house, we're like, hey, welcome. Hey, good good to have you. We're like having a gathering at our place. 
she will run into the house, ignore everybody, not hug anyone, not say hi to anybody. Immediately, she just starts going through every room of the house. She'll go poke her head in one room, dig around for a minute, lift some stuff up, do some stuff, and then leave, go to the next room, do the same thing, just through the whole house. And then when you yeah. finally go f down to find out where the crap she ended up, she'll be sitting on somebody's bed, didn't matter whose, with a bunch of coupons that she gathered at, while she hunted through your house from newspaper, uh, you know, old newspapers, and she's on the or on the thing with a pair of scissors cutting out your coupons so she can take them home. With <laughs> It's so weird. It's so that weird. That's crazy. That is a really bizarre thing. Like at first, I was thinking that she. Uh, I know, and I know you've told the story before. At first, I was thinking that God, maybe she's looking for something that you borrowed at some point that you said you gave back to her, and she's like no. insistent that you never gave it back to her. I mean, that would be a better thing than what the she coupon, does. The coupons thing is even better though. It's like the so fact weird. that she doesn't even do it out in the open, like that she's. Hiding away. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very odd thing. And oh, I love it. To this day, it. it just makes me laugh. I don't even bother. It doesn't even bother me now. Um, and sometimes she'll do it. She goes, oh, I, have not, I haven't seen your house in a long time. And she'll just run around the house and look at everything. Just huh. to be looking at it. Just to check and make sure everything's going okay. <laughs> and uh, Or if you just did something like we just put hardwood in. She goes, oh, no, I don't know if I would do that. I go, what? She goes, too expensive, too expensive. Like, oh, now it's done. It's in right now. Plus, we got a really good yeah. deal and all this other stuff. No, 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 no. Too much money. Too much money. What are, <laughs> what are we doing here? She's yeah. She's very this unusual. old house. Yeah. And this is Lemonade 2020. This is the Casio keyboard sister. Same girl. Same woman, I should say. Her name is Oak remind, me, remind me of the Casio keyboard story. She's she's the one that goes to garage sales every weekend. Oh, I mean, right, every and weekend. buys Casio keyboards. Yep, or looks takes, for them, those takes them home and then refurbs them better than they were at the garage sale. Like if they didn't work or they were missing a That's power right. supply or yes. they were dusty, she gets them all cleaned up and then resells them at her garage sale for like three times the money she paid for. <laughs> <laughs> For no reason. There's no reason to do it. They've got plenty of money. Their house is paid off. They actually have two houses right. paid off. One, they have people living in it, renting it from them. But they act like they're in squalor with the coupons and the freaking yeah. Casio keyboards. Yeah. It's so weird. She's like her reality show would be extreme Casio keyboard makeover. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'd watch it is what I'm saying. I would too. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm in. Uh, how about this one? Oh, we just got a, a thank you from Richard. He says, thanks for the Taco Bell recommendation last week. What did you recommend? Oh. I don't remember. Just Al Fresco. Uh, or the... Crunchwrap Supreme, I think. But I said you could either go with Crunchwrap Supreme or start with a taco and a and a taco supreme. Kind of work your way up to the the uh, the the more elaborate menu items. But That's I think you went right. with the former. That's right. Crunchwrap Supreme. By uh, the way, we played. I, I gave you that link. I gotta I gotta thank uh, Byron Lee who let me know about that um, that Fury Road. Holiday Road mashup or parody thing. Mm. Oh, um, that was so good. Isn't that cool? Yeah. It's not a poopy one like most of those are. Right. Usually right. Michael like, Thies oh. actually mm. sent me a link to that as well. So I got two a great, people to thank. Great kick kick out of that. That was great. Um, in fact, I retweeted it and put your name on it. I saw that. Yeah, thank you for that. Uh, excuse me. So then, oh, where was I? Oh, I was going to read this one. Peter Fisher wrote in. Oh, good. Finally got through. Whew. What console slash PC game coming out between now and the holidays are you most excited about? Easy answer. Uh, there are two of them. Number yeah. one, uh, uh, Red Dead Redemption 2 Red coming Dead. to PC. Sure. So I'm excited about that. That's like in a two weeks or something. I could like answer that. that one for you. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. The other one is Outer, or Outer Worlds, which is hmm. uh, Obsidian Entertainment known for all kinds of RPGs, but in my mind known for... The, they they did the Fallout New Vegas game, which is my favorite Fallout game and one of my favorite RPGs of all time. Uh, they also make a bunch of great PC RPGs. Uh, Pillars of Eternity 1 and 2 are fantastic. Oh my gosh, they're so good. Mm. Um, and they got about Microsoft, but they were already working on this. Anyway, it's called Outer Wilds, and it appears to be sort of an intergalactic uh, RPG, but it's a lot like Fallout, but not not fallout in that the world's destroyed it's just fallout in space kind of okay. um and it looks amazing and that's out like within a wow. week or two so those are my oh, two really? those okay. are my two big ones everything else i don't care about i'm good on those. i hadn't even heard about that one yeah do you have anything um, you're uh, looking for mine to? is uh i've even pre-ordered it uh, pokemon sword and pokemon shield i pre-ordered shield because i'm a pokemon guy but deep down i'm a marvel guy too mm -hmm. so 
Yeah, I get you. So, what, Pokemon and Nick Fury joining forces in S.H.I.E.L.D.? I'm in. That's, I'm totally in. That is that not how right. the game is played? Oh, crap. Oh, oh shoot. Anymore. You mean there's no Marvel in there? Darn. Darn. Exactly. Uh, right. Luigi's yeah. Mansion is coming out, too, next week, isn't it? Or On soon. the Switch, yeah, right. Yeah. So, there's a lot of cool Switch stuff. Outer Worlds looks great. And, oh, Outer Worlds is on Game Pass, which means I don't have to pay for it in the traditional way. Yeah. I have the five dollar a month game pass thing on pc i'll play the pc version for free well, not for free but for the for the subscription yeah, for what you're already what you're already paying for basically yeah so that way i'll feel yeah. better about spending full dime on red dead 2 for pc and i won't have to eat it on the other one so very good That's yeah cool. great question there peter fisher it's a good time yeah. to ask about video games uh i beat a bloke says uh it sorry is it pronounced robotron or robot ron <laughs> because dogs with brains really wanted to know he says um robotron you know it's not it's neither it's it's robotron robo with an a robotron i think it's robotron robo robotron yeah ro i mean i'm saying it fast robotron yeah, yeah robotron robotron you robotron. didn't walk into the arcade and say i want to play robotron <laughs> no. you say i want to play robotron let's go over and play robotron oh, 2084 what a great game that was that was really good. Way ahead See, of I'm time. waiting for that one. That's one that um, when New Wave Toys gets around to it, oh, New Wave yeah. Toys that does the the Centipede and the Tempest. Yeah. When they get around to uh, Robotron, that's going to be a perfect one. Yep. They're doing uh, Street Fighter right now. I you can't do Street Fighter. No. Too many. No. Too many buttons. Too much hassle. Too much hassle. Also, too new. We need something ancient on there. Yeah. Although the way they're doing it, they they'll have the controls on the machine, but then you'll also have little remote. They look kind of like uh, the size of uh, Joy Cons mm. that have all the buttons, so you can play remotely with a friend side by side on Street Fighter. Exactly. Uh, there's Still, some, yeah. uh, and I can't tell if J.K. Grammar's being serious or not, but Outer Wilds and Outer Worlds are two different games. Outer Wilds is already out, and it's a weird little indie game, and it's pretty cool. The Outer Worlds is the game that Obsidian is working on. Just for cool. verification. It's an easy mistake to make. Those games are very similar in name. When's that uh, the thing that had... Um, oh, uh, uh, Daryl from uh, The Walking Dead. Oh, the, uh, 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 Death Stranding. Death Stranding. Is that, that this year? That's November, yep. November, okay. Yeah, that's right. one to There's keep your eye on. There's two of them that I'm... Yeah. Keep your eye on that one, because... I need to. Uh, he's freaking Kojima's a nutbag. The games he makes are crazy, <laughs> and they're crazy to his ben, to yeah. his. You know th that's a good thing. His things are sure. weird. Metal and Gear I love it. and yeah, Metal Gear is so weird. They got and it got weirder as time went on, mm -hmm. and so this looks like the weirdest thing ever made, and I think that's interesting to me. But I need to know what the gameplay loop is. I just I can't tell enough about what you're doing. Because if all it is is a series of really weird cutscenes, I'm not. Sh I can probably get that on YouTube, you yeah. know. Yeah. Right. So if if that's all it is, but if it's like a really cool, uh, actual gameplay, which again he's not necessarily. I mean, there's lots of great game gameplay in a lot of those Metal Gear games, but some of them less so. So I, you know, I don't know. I'm on a big. I'm on a fat fence on that one. I don't know what I'm doing. For yet. sure. We'll see. Yeah, he's. Uh uh he's it's been very very quick or very uh vague what what the game is is like so dap patty is new in the chat didn't know you had a full-size arcade cabinet back there uh-huh yeah yeah it's, brian's got a tempest uh, not only machine. a cabinet but it's got a whole tempest uh, it's got tempest guts in it and i can play it what's hilarious is you have that and another little tiny tempest machine and from those arcade guys a little tempest yep little tempest little big tempest little tempest now you just need a middle tempest tempest like a sit down uh, cocktail model <laughs> Right, yes, that's what I mean. All like Russian nesting dolls. I like this. <laughs> That'd be perfect, exactly. <laughs> uh, all right. I think that's going to do it today. Uh, good job, everybody. Good job. Very good. Got dinner with the kids later. I'm very excited. It's good to see you. Nice. I'm tonight. going out for Thai with the crazy neighbors. Oh, that sounds also good. Although, yes. I wonder what Kim's making. I hope it's as good as Thai. <laughs> that's terrible to say. I'm sure it'll be fine. Did, uh, by the way, did my did my Weight Watchers uh, weigh in today? Oh, how'd it go? Uh, keep in mind, it's colder now, so I actually have to wear more clothes to my weigh-in. And I'm wearing two shirts and long pants. I can't get away with shorts anymore. Yeah. Uh, 0.6 down. Wow. Almost, uh, you know, 
almost a pound. I'm st I've been steadily losing. It's it's slowed down a little bit at the end of the summer, fall. That's but, what you're supposed uh, to do, though. That's how it's supposed to go. Yeah, right? it's just. I, I mean, it'd be great to more. have it be I'll faster work. for sure, but but yeah, the healthy way is you're supposed to lose gradually. Exactly. Um, yep. In fact, part of my whole deal with the stupid high blood sugar thing may have been caused by rapid water oh, loss. Oh, by rapid. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So some of that stuff is freaky. But anyway, uh, that's good. Well done. I'm also, yeah. uh, so I'm at the point where I'm losing a lot very quickly because I quit all the sugar. Mm -hmm. I'm sure this is going to slow down, but I am eight pounds down now from last week. Very so, good. Very good. And it seems to be all fat. And a lot of it's my face. I feel skinnier in the face. It's my fish. Shot me in the fish. <laughs> all right. Uh, that's it for the show. Thank you all for being here. If you didn't know why we did the fifth episode of the week, it's because we get support from you at patreon.com slash TMS. Uh, we were real dumb about how we set things up, and we gave you a bonus <laughs> day of content for hardly anything. And take advantage of us is all I'm saying. Get out there and support it. Uh, if everybody did a buck a month, Brian and I could do just about nothing but TMS. Mm -hmm. And we could expand what we do. Oh, man, it would be amazing. Uh, so that's a dream, but go check it out. Patreon.com slash TMS for everything else. Frogpants.com slash TMS. And now Brian will play a song that he's selected from a group of songs that are all cool, but this is the coolest. Brian, what do you have? <laughs> wow, that was a very well uh, explained thing. Sure. Uh, all right. So you remember when you and I were talking about uh, what Jesus would drive? I do remember this. Yes, we talked. Oh, and it weeks we, ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah, one of what was the one that we were wrong? We didn't say on the air, but somebody corrected us, and it was really good. Um, Shoot, someone said a chord because they said they had a scripture about speaking with yes, one accord, and then right. somebody else said something else. But there was one God has an accord or something like that. There was uh, one that was like it was almost good as calling it the resurrection or something. It was perfect, and I don't remember what it right. was. The anyway, Pontiac Rapture or something like that. Something like that. Anyway. Um, uh, so somebody wrote in by the name, uh, using the name Gold Frankincense and Myrrh. Whoa. All right. Uh, requesting this one. After the last couple of comments about what Jesus drives, you've, you've missed the obvious answer. Wait for it. Jesus built my hot rod by ministry. Not only is one of the coolest videos of all time, but anybody driving in a, heart, a car listening to this song will probably get a speeding ticket. Enjoy. <laughs> Nice. So uh, this is true. And Ministry did the original. Guess who did a cover? A band called The Boss Hoss. These guys do these uh, um, these hillbilly versions of, I think these guys are German, this, these German hillbilly versions of uh, rock classics. Oh, we've done this those before in here, I think, those guys. Haven't we done them? We have. There's a couple bands like this. The Boss Hoss, uh, the Baseballs are the same kind of thing. Mm. Um, I love that. What a weird uh, subgenre. So it really is. And it's, I don't know why Germany is the place for all this stuff. But yeah. anyway, here you go. It's Jesus Built My Hot Rod by the Boss Haas from their album Let's Go Rodeo Radio from 2006. See you guys on Monday. Whoops. See you guys on Monday. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Frog Pants Network. Get more shows like this at frogpants.com. Oh, hell no. You will stop now. Oh, all right. Wendy. Oh, hell no. <laughs> Wendy with a little bit of a twang. I was going to say, it barely sounded like her. Yeah. Bad. All right, let's put this back on. All right, hello, patrons. We're back. We are going to.